Today we are going to uh, start our uh, next module, where we would be exclusively focusing on aggressive behavior. Okay. The way we would uh, move in this module is that we will first uh, take uh, the proper definition of aggression, what aggression means. We will look at uh, some of the very salient characteristics of aggressive behavior. Uh, we would look at uh, the fact that how do people learn anger, okay. how do people learn how to become angry, how to display their uh, aggression. We will also talk about you know the hostility and non hostility uh, component in aggressive behavior okay. and then uh, you know towards the fag end we will start discussing about uh, the relationship between uh, frustration and aggression. We will talk about one uh, very popular hypothesis in psychology called frustration aggression hypothesis. We will also discuss uh, a model that talks about uh, know how people learn how to become angry and uh, the last part of uh, this module would be where we would be talking about a disorder which the behavior which basically reflects a disorder, but then people usually uh, ignore it what is called as impulse control disorder, okay, the inability of an individual to have a control over one's own impulse. Okay. So, the end of this module would be impulse control disorder. <coughs> uh, we take a, a definition of aggression, you will find many, many definitions given by many people. This is from uh, uh, Mosby's uh, medical dictionary, which defines aggression as a forceful behavior. No, again, no, like all other definitions, this will also have multiple components. No, so I am instead of reading the details, what I will do is that I will break it into I will break it into uh, multiple components. No, a forceful behavior, action, or attitude. Okay, so it could be a forceful behavior, it could be a forceful action, it could be even a forceful attitude also that is expressed physically, verbally or symbolically. Okay. So, in terms of expression you find that it can be physically expressed, it can be verbally expressed, it can be even symbolically expressed. It may arise from innate drive or occur as a defense mechanism. No? So, either there is an innate uh, desire within you to show this type of an aggressive behavior or it could simply be a strategy to defend yourself, often resulting from threatened ego okay. and the onset the trigger of it would be a threat to your own ego. It is manifested by either constructive or destructive act. Okay. Usually this is the component that we usually ignore when we talk about aggression that the element of aggression can be constructive, it can be destructive. Usually our uh, commonsensical experience says that it has to be destructive in nature. Little later we will talk about the constructive element in anger okay. and uh, it, is a, it is manifested by either constructive or destructive act which could be directed towards oneself or towards other. No? So, you could have a constructive aggression, you could have a destructive aggression the constructive or the destructive aggression can be directed towards the self or it could be directed towards the other. Commonsensically the type of uh, aggressive behavior that we talk about are usually uh, of course, behavior action we ignore attitude, uh, we do know that fine it can be physical, it can be verbal, it can be symbolic also this we know. Okay. It could be innate, it could be as a defense that we know. Okay. It could be constructive or destructive, I think you know usually commonsensically we consider it to be destructive. So, constructive is uh, something that we usually ignore okay. and then usually what we know is that aggression means it will always be directed towards others. Okay. So, this is also one of the component which is ignored where uh, there could be a possibility where anger is directed towards the self.
we would come to all of this one by one. Now, if you uh, look at the features of aggression okay, as we have discussed in uh, this definition okay, that it incorporates both it has to have an attitude it has to have an action. Okay. So, unless and until I have uh, no an attitude towards the object of threat okay, where I feel handling uh, the person or the situation head on okay, unless I have that attitude I would not have the aggression within me okay. and once I have this there would be an action component also. Now, it can take any form it could be physically expressed you know what physical expression of anger means. Okay. It could be a verbal uh, manifestation. So, you verbally state your anger okay. or there could be you know uh, symbolic representations also. Okay. Uh, much later we will also talk about uh, you know scapegoat finding scapegoats to reflect your anger. Okay, where you would realize uh, that in many cases uh, we use symbolic representations of anger. No? So, we do not verbally express our anger, we do not even uh, know get engaged into a physical fight, but there are symbolic way of showing the fact that I am angry. The most commonly experienced example uh, could be, but before that let me ask you all of you have travelled in uh, vehicles used for mass transportation no? it could be bus it could be local trains all of you have this experience. Now, imagine a situation or recollect from your past experience no? it tra you travelling in a local bus commuting from one point in the city to the other point or uh, boarding a local train okay, which is crowded no? densely populated by the co-passengers. And then you realize know that uh, know repeatedly somebody comes rubs uh, his or her shoulder against you and moves know. There is usually a tendency to know make it much more stiffer. Okay. Somebody you know the, the moment the bus starts moving somebody know now hits you repeatedly Gent, it is a gentle uh, hitting, but then somebody hits you okay. because he or she you know swings along with the bus or the train. Know. And either you know look at him or her you know with a frowning face to uh, express your uh, disgust to express your uh, discomfort with the behavior okay. or you make your body very stiff you know, and this itself makes the person realize that this is an undesirable act the person is showing his or her anger. These are symbolic representations you know. and aggressive behavior could be constructive it could be destructive as well. When we talk of uh, constructive aggression, basically what we are uh, know referring to is a module of anger for asserting oneself in a threatening condition. Know. Basically what happens that you will realize that the situation in which you are, okay, it challenges your survival, okay, there is a big threat to you. And in order to protect yourself, you suddenly become very angry. Okay. Now, here if you do not know manifest your anger, okay, then your uh, survival is at stake, because your anger helps you survive. Therefore, here anger is considered as constructive. No? So, you have a threatening condition. Okay. You assert yourself and this serves a function of helping you survive, it protects you okay. and therefore, such type of aggressive behavior are considered to be constructive aggression. When we come to the opposite form of it that is the destructive aggression, if the hostility is directed towards an external agent okay, and does not serve the purpose of self protection. Okay. Remember little later we will also come to anger which is directed towards the self itself. Okay. So, here we are talking about uh, the fact that your anger is directed towards an external agent, but remember the major determinant is that it is not serving the purpose of self protection. No? And because this component is missing 
therefore, you are in turn becoming a threat for somebody else okay. and hence your aggression is classified as destructive aggression. Okay. Uh, you would find uh, very interesting things you know, right from uh, uh, the history of uh, human struggle in the uh, forest with different type of animals or if you look at uh, the fight of one group of individuals with the other, you would realize you know, that uh, many a times people show exemplary uh, you know, tendency to fight back. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, a lonely person or a lonely fighter left in a battlefield, a lonely traveler uh, know, facing a tiger or a lion in the forest, okay. a helpless man uh, trying to safeguard himself or herself uh, from a dangerous snake. Okay. Many, many a times you would realize that this person was otherwise you no know, nobody perceived that he or she could be a man of exemplary bravery you know. but then you realize that suddenly the person you no know, shows extreme of anger and extreme of anger would also mean that you have extra amount of energy being secreted by your endocrine system you no know. so you will have much more energy with you okay so anger that way is needed because if you do not turn angry Okay, uh, that the whole set of neural firings, the whole backup of the endocrine system will not be made available to you and therefore, the likelihood of you uh, know losing the war against the object of threat will maximize. Okay. Hence, people turn angry and therefore, such type of aggressive acts are classified as constructive aggression. Now, the major challenge also comes when you have aggressive behavior which is directed towards oneself. Okay. Now, inward aggression is the destructive aggressive behavior that is inflicted on oneself. Uh, that is little sad part of uh, the human behavior, but uh, you must have read about, I do not know how many of you have uh, personally come to know such cases, but I am sure some of you must have come across people you know who usually would uh, inflict some harm on oneself. Okay. You are extremely frustrated, okay. a relationship that breaks down okay. and then uh, you have uh, you know, harmed yourself with those cigarette buds. This is very common in uh, educational institutions okay uh, or where you have you know people in the late adolescent years you know, early adulthood late adolescence this is not very common but not so rare also okay you would find somebody you know who had uh, a difficult relationship okay and then you know two three wounds of the cigarette buds you no know, and the wound of the cigarette bud takes longer time to heal Okay, very painful, but you do so. The harm is inflicted on oneself, the anger is self directed. Why did I get involved with her? Okay. So, this is uh, you know, the self inflicting behavior. No? Uh, when you suddenly think you know, that oh, this life is not worth living, you take a blade and put a cut mark on your wrist. Okay. Uh, sad to say, but there are many, many, many such cases that you would come to know. No? These are basically uh, those form of aggressive behavior, where the threat is inflicted on the self, no? the harm is inflicted on the self. Okay. The minimum of it could be uh, no, mutilating one's own body part and the maximum of it could be committing suicide. Okay. Suicide is a topic that we would not be touching in as a part of this course, okay. but to tell you that you know this is the full range of uh, 
aggression inflicted on oneself. Now, the major question comes that how do we learn to express our anger in this form. Okay. Uh, people who have survived their suicidal attempts will tell you that no, uh, I was uh, no fed up of life. Okay. I failed at this, I failed at that or I failed at only one point that was the major loss. But when you look at others in the world who are still surviving, those who did not commit such act, okay, they also had uh, know, several uh, episodes of failures. But why is it that some people uh, know, think of committing such acts and some people do not think of it at all? They keep on keep on suffering throughout their life, but they never think of uh, inflicting harm on their own selves. People who would not hesitate you know, hitting the other person at the spur of the moment and people who would be extremely reluctant okay, hitting others. Why are those differences seen? Okay. Basically, it is uh, accepted that we learn aggressive behavior through two different channels. Later on, we will uh, come to Anderson's model also, how these things form a network that we will discuss little later. So, aggressive behavior could be a behavior that is derived rather directly learned okay, uh, from socio personal environment. Okay. So, you have certain type of uh, acts of uh, aggression, which you very uh, know commonly find in your personal social environment. Just uh, next to it, we will come to very interesting uh, reports, no? uh, one from UN, the other one from uh, uh, again uh, one of the bodies of the UN, okay. two interesting reports, okay. one of uh, Indian women, the other of Indian adolescents, very interesting uh, data. Okay. Now, if I find that uh, as a small baby, I find that on very small, small issues, my father enjoys the liberty of shouting at my mother. Okay. This is a type of aggression that I have seen in my social personal environment right from the beginning. And therefore, I realize that fine there is no harm shouting at women. You would realize that such children in the families where fathers take the pride in shouting at uh, the wife. Okay. And if the family has a male child, you would realize that the child gradually by the time the child is 2, 2 and a half, 3 years, the child also starts shouting at the mother, the male child. But that the same male child will not shout at the father, because he would make a distinction, he learns. Okay. So, women could be an object of anger. Uh, men cannot be, okay. because you also fear that if I shout at my father, I can be you know getting the reciprocal response from that end. The possibility of reciprocal response from um, the male end makes you realize that you can enjoy the liberty of shouting at your mother. Now, you have an extra addition in the family a girl child is added okay. and then you realize that this male child will start now shouting at the mother as well as the sister. It is very common, very common in our country. Okay. Uh, episodes where out of misunderstanding or out of not understanding your viewpoint out of confusion or out of displacement, the parents can enjoy the liberty of hitting you as a child. This is also very common in our culture. No? As parents, you can hit the child as and when you want. Okay. The triggers for such type of behavior okay, could look you know, very absurd to us. I recollect now while I am talking about it, I recollect of a very interesting example. Once I was sitting in uh, the health center here, okay. 
uh, women in the 30s with two kids, one little grown up and one uh, very, very small a toddler. Okay. Uh, this small family unit was also sitting on the other side, waiting for their turn to visit the doctor. The younger child was of course, in the laps of the mother, the older child was sitting next to the mother, but was also uh, given the responsibility of holding the health card. Okay. And then uh, no, this child started uh, no, playing with the health card, no, he will rotate it and it fell down. Once the child picked it up and the moment it fell down the second time, okay, in, a, in a moment of reflex the mother slapped the child. Okay. I was sitting on the other side, I do not know if I would have been in place of the mother, what I would have done, but because I was the third party sitting on the other side, immediately it came to my mind. Okay, uh, that what this child would have thought right now. The child would have thought, come on, I do not want it to see the doctor, you have brought me here. Okay, I did not want to hold the medical card, you have given it to me. Okay. And then after all this, okay, what is the big deal if it has fallen down? No, it was not a uh, no earthen pot, uh, glass vessel that will that has no broken down. No, it is a uh, no collection of pieces of papers has fallen down again, I can pick it up again, I can play again, it can fall down, what is so great in it. But then as children, you do not have this liberty you know, of asking back that, why did you hit me? Okay. It will be again considered to be an offense, you know, that children are not supposed to uh, ask their parents, why they were hit. Okay. Or you could be unreasonably, uh, and the parents can shout at you, okay. keep quiet. And you do not have the liberty of asking your uh, parent or telling uh, your parent that fine, you are shouting louder than me. You know. But these are the things which are very interesting in our culture, where these are interesting thing in our culture, which you realize are uh, no, uh, very interesting, but because it has cultural acceptance, therefore, we ignore these uh, forms of manifestation of anger. Uh, you remember the very famous case uh, in our country, where in the media it was discussed for very, very long, two, three weeks it was discussed, when an Indian couple uh, staying in Norway, uh, the government of Norway had uh, withdrawn the two kids from them, saying that you are not playing the role of proper parents. No? Now, take this case okay, and understand it from a cultural viewpoint. No? There is a culture where hitting a child is considered to be okay, an undesirable act, an unacceptable act and the fault is put not on the children, but on the parents. No? That if you are slapping your children, this simply means you are uh, not capable of handling kids and therefore, Okay, there are many, many countries uh, know, uh, where you have uh, these uh, special care homes for children, where children they are put there under the care of somebody, the government pays for care giving, simply because you the government considers that you are not matured enough to handle kids. In our country, you can enjoy the liberty, whenever you come home, no, this side, that side. No you can have, you know, because we are the most populous country, second most populous country. So, you will have more kids around you also. You know. So, you can keep walking you know, and hitting kids the way you want, but culturally it is accepted. Okay. Now, if you are born in culture like this, it is very easy for you to pick up those forms of behavior and start reflecting it in your own uh, behavior. So, today you start shouting at your mother, tomorrow you start shouting at your sister, okay. day after tomorrow you do not even hesitate shouting at your wife or hitting your wife. We will come to a interesting statistical data little later. Okay. There are uh, no uh, places in our country, if you move from the eastern to the western side of India. Okay. 
and just look at how people talk to strangers or how people talk to others no, who are known to them. You start from uh, the eastern side, I am not going to far northeast, start from uh, Bengal, okay, uh, where you will have words like Tumi, Apni. Okay. So, you have a clear distinction where there are people who are given utmost respect even in terms of uh, know, calling them. Okay. So, come to the Hindi belt, enter Jharkhand, Bihar, okay. come to central uh, UP and till that you have that distinction. No? You have uh, know, younger to you, you will prefer to call Tum, older to you, you will uh, use the word Aap for them. Okay. Uh, and at times even for strangers who are younger to you, you use the word up, no? because you maintain certain level of decorum. But the moment you start moving towards the western side of UP, okay, you start realizing the difference. No? There is no distinction of tum and up, no? everybody is tum. Okay. That is very interesting thing and the more you start moving towards Haryana, okay, you find the language has become little more rustic from people uh, who are on the eastern side from their viewpoint. No? Those who are born and brought up in Haryana for them it is uh, normal conversation. Okay. I remember long back, I was uh, somewhere outside India and there was a colleague of mine, in, an Indian friend of mine there. Okay. Many a times I used to visit him. Uh, because we were the only two Indians known to each other no, in that country uh, at that point in time. So, and he was basically from uh, Haryana, no, very close to Delhi. One day he called up to talk to his cousin okay, and the daughter of the cousin picked up the phone. You can switch it off. No? Done. Now, this man gives a call to his cousin, the daughter of the cousin picks up, he used the word, I would not use that word here, it would not be considered so acceptable, no? uh, but I am told that in Haryana people use this word and there is uh, no, no string attached to it. He used that word and said, Tumhara baap kaha hai? Okay. had somebody like this would have told to my daughter, to my wife, to my mother or to me we would have felt extremely offended. Okay. We do not use sentences like this no? and for them it was a normal conversation. So, then I asked him no, that uh, is it the accepted part of uh, conversation and he said, huh, so what is the harm in it, what is wrong in it no? and that was a very interesting uh, know, discussion that took place between us, but I would not go into the details. Uh, come to certain other aspects of aggressive behavior, where uh, you to central uh, UP, where you realize that uh, know, uh, people will take pride in uh, know, becoming sober and just uh, know, you cross Kanpur, little ahead of Kanpur, no? Itawa, Manpuri onwards, know, you start moving there. And then you will find that a whole lot of adolescents, they carry country made weapons with them. Okay. So, as a growing child, as a growing adolescent in that culture, if you are not carrying uh, know, a country made weapon, you feel inferior, no? because 35 of your classmates, 32 of them they carry. Okay. You are the one who is still not carrying it and remaining two do not carry because they are women. And therefore, there is a desperate urge in you that I should also have it. Certain part of uh, western UP you would find that uh, carrying weapons is just like carrying you know, a mobile phone in the class. No? The moment you, you know you take pride in taking out the mobile phone and holding in your palm and sitting in the class. Similarly, you know somebody can oh, it is very hot, take out the fire weapon in the arms and say, very common. 
do we have somebody here from western up merat itawa anybody from that region nobody uh, couple of semesters back no i was giving the same examples again it has come back to me and there was somebody in this class who was from uh, itawa and he said yes okay and you know later on uh, we did have very interesting conversation he would twice thrice he came to my office and shared whole lot of experience no uh, the most interesting part of that experience was that he said that since ninth onwards i have been carrying a country made weapon with me and i always took pride no there was a pride because everybody would carry everybody would take it out and will you know showcase it as if no your weapon is far inferior compared to mine and stuffs like this so the way you have verbal exchanges in your aggressive retaliation somebody will take no country made weapon the other person will take out country made weapon this is also very common in the western part here very interestingly later on he shared with me that when he came to iit there was a big cultural shock no one was carrying a fire weapon okay and he said that no i live so close to kanpur no my uh, 15 16 17 years of age i have lived so close to kanpur and i was always carrying weapons for last 3 4 years and we all took pride you know the whole culture is like that no every family would have multiple weapons okay all adolescents will take pride in carrying weapons i came here and i found boys you no know, dedicated more towards jeans and t-shirts towards gel and other other things rather than being interested in country made weapons you no know. he said that i started reflecting back and now it really hurts me and i think that how crude i was okay when i started seeing so many polished people around me and i see the beauty of being polished this is no what the social personal environment does to us you are you live in an environment to see the beauty of it i'll just share very interesting experience and then we'll move ahead uh couple of years ago i was staying in japan and uh, i saw beautiful things happening on the roads there they have fantastic road system so that was fine but you no know, within the old city you know, where you have still you know narrow roads it wasn't as narrow as we find here in many parts in our country but it was such that no two vehicles can cross each other with little difficulty they also have the such type of roads uh, you know in the old part of the cities and then very interestingly i would see that uh, the vehicles coming from two different directions okay both of them will stop now the driver of say if i am driving one vehicle and if he, there is the other vehicle on that side and we have to cross each other on the road okay so both the vehicles will stop the prof whose vehicle i used to usually sit on okay he will uh, know he was a japanese and he would know ask the other driver that this way means you go first that driver will in turn stop okay and he will also say that you go first okay at times he used to uh, go first at times the other person used to go first but then the one who would go first would again come in a very slow speed close to you okay and then wow on the steering no symbolic form of showing your gratitude compare that experience with the experience that you have when you turn to the lecture hall complex here no uh, you have two three sis guards there and still you no know, people are struggling the best part of kanpur uh, is that you know even those who are on the bicycles they also don't feel you no know, putting their brakes you no know. so unless it's very very essential brakes are not used in kanpur you no know. and therefore the at the fag moment at the fag end suddenly when you realize that brake brake has to be used okay so everybody will you know press the brake very hard okay and this is uniformly true from right from bicycles to the autos the cars and the city buses okay these are very interesting things no why did we evolve like this and why did they evolve like that 
the best part also of the driving phenomena there I what I observed was that for those many months and months together, I never ever saw any vehicle honking. Okay. So, there was absolute silence on the road, no? only you will have the bikers who would know drive fast and uh, their vehicles will create more sound okay. and uh, no, their roads would have many, many lanes. So, people who would drive fast of course, their vehicles will create sound, except that sound okay, for months together I never ever heard somebody honking. Two, three, four years back there was some Indo-German workshop, uh, workshop in IIT Madras. Uh, I went there, it was basically a workshop of the civil engineering guys, the earthquake guys, okay. but uh, there was uh, know, something that had to do with uh, know, uh, what we had discussed, know, PTSD, acute stress and stuff like this and therefore, we were also uh, invited there. And uh, we were going to uh, Mahabalipuram know, from Madras, know. the vehicle which was hired Okay, the driver would uh, very generously you know suddenly sometimes put his uh, know, wrist on the horn and it will blow. The German sitting next to me very jokingly told me, but it was very true, he told me you Indians are great. Okay. It is just like say you know the moment we cross each other in the current and say hi, how are you? Okay, so, one vehicle just overtaking the other and will honk you know, and the other will also start honking. You know. So, you have so much of exchanges on the road. <laughs> okay. So, these are interesting things why somebody you know uh, learns not to honk at all uh, compared to somebody who enjoys putting a hand on the horn itself. No? Uh, all of you must have experienced you know, the when the railway crossing is uh, you know, closed at IIT main gate. No? Uh, now, that you have the divider earlier it was not there. No? And people take pride in you know, blocking the road, and the moment the shutter opens, everybody starts honking. You know, as if the more you honk, the more space you will have, which is not true. Such correlations do not exist, everybody knows it, but still you take pride in doing that. And in nobody realizes that in turn you are hurting your own ears. You know. Few of few of your hair cells are dying each time you hear a sound of a louder pitch. So, this is what it means you know, uh, uh, that how the social personal environment makes you learn certain things. There could be another very interesting way of uh, learning to be angry and that is the aggressive behavior that is derived more indirectly. You know. Here in the previous case it was a very direct experience, you, know. you have things available in your uh, you know, personal social environment. Here you have things which are very indirectly learned. Okay from experimental environment. Experimental environment means that those things do not exist in your environment, you have never experienced it, it is your novel experience. And appear more immediately motivated by emotional states of anger and hostility. You know. So, you have a big change that comes in your environment, sudden change, a novel thing a novel experience you have not realized it, because it has come for the first time. Therefore, you have certain degree of anger, hostility such type of emotions involved in that process out of your interaction with that hostile experience. You realize that okay, one has to handle such situations in such ways, uh, I am giving couple of examples, few of them might look absurd, but culturally true therefore, I am quoting it. Imagine a young girl who is growing in this culture and experiences is talking for the first time, somebody passes adverse remark for the first time okay. and then you realize it is a big shock, something that you have never ever experienced comes to you for the first time and then you realize that oh this can also happen. You go with a confirmed train ticket to realize that somebody else is sitting or sleeping on your uh, bird. 
okay. and with a lot of a struggle you manage only to sit on the birth. The person is not at all leaving the seat. I hope many of you must have experienced. No? These are very common when you travel in the northern part of India. Now, these are very these experiences gradually becomes common experiences with more and more of uh, life experience, but imagine when you had it for the first time and you think I do not know how to handle it. So, all you do is that you take out your ticket and you confirm your uh, birth and you say this is my birth and the person says hmm. So, and you do not know because you have never ever experienced. So, this is an experimental situation for you know. So, what do you do now? And then you realize this strategy does not work that strategy does not work okay. and then uh, say suddenly you say no, 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 come on, come on, come on leave, leave, leave my seat and the moment you start turning angry a bit you realize oh the person has started you no know, folding his uh, feet giving space to you to sit. This means that if I intensify it then he will certainly allow me occupy my seat this one and you do so, you get your seat and then you have learned. Oh, so, now your experimental uh, environment has made you realize, whenever you experience a stranger holding your seat, turn angry, done. Such type of aggressive behavior are actually learned through such type of experimental manipulations, no? where you do not know, you have never experienced it. So, you try uh, no, various behavior of varying intensity. And then you realize that okay, this is how such people have to be handled. Girls who have experienced stalking, but have never ever dared to go and confront the individual or slap the individual will never do so. You would come across elderly women in our culture who would say that oh right from my early adolescent days I have heard it. No? It is now that I have turned old people have stopped, uh, stopped doing so. And ask them that have you ever dared uh, know going and confronting those people or slapping those people and they will say no. You will find interestingly a very small number of uh, girl who would say I had it for the first time and I do not know what happened. I just went and I said hey what is your name and that boy in turn suddenly you know ran away from that place. Ever since that experience whenever I have heard so I immediately go and ask tell me your address I will talk to your parents. Is this what they have taught you? Okay. Once a boy gave me some answer and then I do not know what happened to me and I slapped. Others also joined me and since then okay, the boys of my hostel or the boys of my college know they do not even dare to converse to me, even normal conversation do not take place. Experimental manipulations and it makes you learn that if situation becomes difficult, how should you handle it. The best of the example, which is usually you know later on ingrained into a regular course of training is when you give commando trainings no, to selected people. For example, no, within the forces you have uh, no, uh, much more glory attached to personnel from the air force no. and within air force no, they give utmost respect to those who are selected for paratroopers. No. Now, when you get such type of uh, trainings, okay, one interesting part of such training is something that you have not experienced, no? others have experienced, you have not experienced and you are given it for the first time. I will just share one or two with you. There are uh, certain localities where you have you know, more of uh, uh, water soaked soil and where you have snails you know, moving here and there all through. A part of the commando training which say suggests that you will be deprived of food okay, and you can have a possibility of eating three snails. So, you are taught how to hold the snails is very easy, you know, snails they do not harm you and then break their shells and eat them. The reason being that three snails provides you the basic level of uh, nutrition that is needed for your survival for one day. But the other part of the training is that all those snails are moving you cannot eat the fourth snail. Okay. 
and if you are caught eating the fourth one, then you will have to suffer some punishment. Okay. So, these are uh, you know, interesting things which people have gradually gathered and uh, many, uh, many things that are basically a part of exp uh, life experience, which is if it is not experimentally it has accidentally come to you, it is deliberately implanted as part of some higher order training, because you are trained to live without food for long in certain areas. Okay. In our countries know those who go for bombing operations in the central India and other parts. Okay they are trained uh, for eating snakes. No? So, how do you identify snakes, how do you catch them, how do you eat them, how to eat if you have a possibility of cooking them, roasting them and how to eat if you do not have the possibility of lighting fire. So, how to eat them raw and all this is part of training. No? Now, those who would be experiencing it for the first time it is a novel experience. No? But then with exposure to it, you gradually learn how to turn angry to what extent in what type of situation. Now, what we realize is that if expression of anger is very common in the society, you realize that most of the time when anger is displayed, it need not be hostile, it need not be defensive. The most common example would be husbands shouting at their wives. It is, it might be devoid of hostility, it might be devoid of defense. It is just the way you have been brought up, the way you have seen interaction taking place between a couple okay. and therefore, uh, you do not find the hair oil, you do not find the comb and you shout. Okay. And it goes to the extent that if you look at this uh, interesting UN report. Okay. It says that uh, 39 percent of men and women in India, they think that beating their wives is a justifiable act. Remember this includes both men and women put together, 39 percent of Indians according to this UN report saying that yes, beating wife is justified act. Come to those who are not yet married, the adolescent group, your age group. Okay. The UNICEF report, okay, uh, which again says that a large percent, no, the age group of 15 to 19, I hope this is your age group, okay. and then you realize that 57 percent of the adolescents saying that yes, beating wives, shouting at wives, there is no harm in doing that, 57 percent. So, 39 percent saying that okay, you can beat your wife, because you have a reason to do so. Okay, unmarried people okay, and say that yes, 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 this is not physical abuse, this is treatment, proper treatment. Large number of adolescents who are not yet married okay, and this is an indicate, uh, interesting indicator that if aggression is inbuilt in your culture, okay, you live it without realizing that this is an aggressive behavior. Okay, we will stop here, tomorrow we will continue from here.